With us now is Ross O. Youngs with Biosortia Pharmaceuticals. Welcome to the show. How are you? Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Donna. Thank you. I was you. really fascinated um, in the conversation that we had because you came from Ohio, so we got to talk on the phone a little bit about your entire company. So can you tell us a little bit about what it is that Biosortia Pharmaceuticals does? Well, thank you. Uh, Biosortia is doing drug discovery. And we've got a source that has been the most prolific source for drugs, but it's been limited to science's research. Okay. They've only had access to about 1% of this source. And with a technology that was actually funded by the Advanced Research Projects Agency of the DOE, and then follow-on funding by DARPA, we advanced the technology to open the door to the other 99% of this source. Now, have you always been interested as a person in science? Have you always, because I know you have a lot of um, patents, discoveries, things that you've invented. Have you always been somebody that's been science-minded? I have been, okay. but I'm, I'm more of a generalist rather than a specialist. So okay. uh, I've been involved in environmental science. I've been involved in technologies. Um, the original technology for this company started uh, with biofuels and bioplastics, okay. but it pivoted to drug discovery once we learned the amazing access to the source we had. And tell us a little bit about that. What is that process? What happens? Well, it's interesting. Most drug discovery occurs at a laboratory bench. And when you're at a laboratory bench, a let's say a technician or a researcher may have access to minimal amounts of material. When they have access to the minimal amounts of material, they try to find out what can grow. Okay. Well, what's interesting is out there in the natural world, when you talk about microbes, less than 1% of the microbes on the planet can grow in a lab, leaving the other 99% unable to be studied. So what we've been able to do is with this technology, we go into the natural world and grab these microbes where they live. And what's interesting about that is we start generally with 20,000, I'm sorry, 20 million liters of source material, which would never fit at right. a laboratory bench. <laughs> and with that, we get all this material, preserve it immediately, and actually protect the chemistry that's inside of these microbes. And it's, one may ask, why do microbes relate to the human? And that's where the microbiome comes in. Okay. Over the last 10 years, one of the things that we've discovered is we've discovered that we are more microbes than we are human. Hmm. We have 40 trillion microbes that live in and on us. We only have 30 trillion cells. Okay. We've all heard about the 23 and me and the, how many uh, genes a human has, 23,000 genes. Our microbes that live in us have over seven million genes, and they produce most of our chemistry, turning things on, off, up, or down, and impacting the vast majority of diseases that we have inside of us. So these have been major breakthroughs in understanding, led by genomics. But genomics has had a very difficult time in making drugs because it's the code. Yeah. It's all about the chemistry, and now we have access to the chemistry in a unique way. Now, how were you originally funded, and what's the process like now? Where, where is this growing and going? Well, when we created the original technology, we applied for grants. Okay. Uh, so we received between uh, ARPA, DARPA, the U.S. Air Force Research uh, Labs, we received almost $10 million in support to build out the technology. And then we've had angel investors that have brought us along to this stage. Now we're ready to move to that next stage and really execute. And what we want to do is focus on uh, anti-cancer opportunities and uh, build out what would be the largest library ever in existence in microbial secondary metabolites. Think of the drug-like chemistry that's inside of humans that turns things on, off, up, or down, and hits these targets. It's, it's so, so very, very fascinating to me. And I know that you have a website, you have additional information on that website uh, for people to find out more information. But the overall process, I believe, for you is to 
uh, be able to create this and then bring it to market for, you know, for cures, uh, in cosmetics, so many of our day-to-day -day, uh, life things that, like you say, touch us and that are in us um, and to make the world a better place. That's so true. And when we build our library, which we hope to be able to do within the next year, the ability for us to work with researchers worldwide, not only in the various therapeutic areas, anti-cancer, immunolo immunology, uh, let's say infectious disease, metabolic disease, neuro CNS, all of our chemistry fits very well with those kind of diseases. But beyond that, things like longevity, things like cosmetics and agricultural products is where this library will be able to play, expanding what science has had in access and knowledge to microbes to a hundred times what we have today. Well, I would like to sign up to be one of the uh, people that participate in that. I just had a birthday this week, and when you talk about longevity, I'd be happy to be at least 125. So uh, count me in on that list. Well, you bet. And we're <laughs> really looking forward to working with researchers. They have the screens. They have the targets. And our chemistry is the most drug-like. It's called pre-optimized by nature. Okay. So it really works well within the human body. And one of the things that's happened over the last 40 years is the chemistry that we've had has been created by chemistry kits. It's called combinatorial chemistry. So it wasn't natural. So it really drove up the cost of finding drugs dramatically. Our technology, once it's implemented, should actually drive down the cost. And what's really, let's say, phenomenal is I think what's, what will happen is researchers around the world over the next decade will start to explore microbiomes not only outside of the human, but all over the planet for their hidden chemistry and their hidden signaling that can impact humans in other markets. Ross, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to know you. I'm looking forward to hearing more and perhaps you'll come on again in a few more months, uh, but thank you so very, very much. Please, if this is something that interests you, and I'm sure it does because it interests me highly, uh, you can go to our website or to the Biosortia website. Thanks for watching.